Hi everyone, Ben here from Sydney Fruit Gardening. So today I'm going to do a video on my multi-grafted espaliered apples. Um, I've got a lot of different varieties on these trees and I'm going to talk you through the different varieties I've got. I'll try and test my movie editing skills and put some pictures up of um, apples uh, that I've picked previously. Um, and maybe talk a little bit about Aspalia as well. So this is an in-depth video on uh, on uh, my multi-grafted uh, apple trees. So let's swing you around, we'll take a look. All right, so I've got three uh, aspalia apple trees here. They're all done in the candelabra style um, of uh, Aspalia. So Aspalia, people get a bit afraid of, but um, to be honest, it's it's easy if you're an attentive gardener and you just come out basically whenever there's there's new growth, much like what I've done up here, and you bend it down and uh, tie it to some wire um, to start to form the pattern. So you do that when the the branches are still soft and flexible. I planted these trees in 2017 except for this this one here which was a, a year later 2018 the trees at their um, basic level they're all dwarf trees so i think they're m26 rootstocks um well these two are m26 um, um the far one is a fuji at the you know it was it came as a fuji the next one's an akane a japanese apple this one's a pinkerbell, um, so the pinkerbell apparently is naturally dwarfing, so I think it may actually be on its own stock. So let's talk through the different varieties here, and why would you do a multi-grafted tree? Well, the, the basic premise is that you can get many different varieties of apple. Um, apples start to become available for eating from December, um, and they go all the way through to... Yeah, July, August um, of the following year. Um, so you get the benefit of having a tree that produces apples for a longer period, so you're extending the harvest season. And you also get to try many different varieties that aren't available in the shops. I think I read somewhere there's about 8,500 different varieties of apples. Um, there's a good deal of apples that are actually still, you know, that are lost to us as well, that were quite popular. Um, with our forebears and when you look at um, if anyone goes on to Trove and looks at the old newspapers and sees you know you can see what was on or for sale in the markets back then and ma many of those varieties you simply can't find anymore but all right well look, I'm going to talk you through the different trees here so Pinkerbell is the first one um, as I said naturally dwarfing tree um, it's one of these varieties that uh, is uh, has planters breeders rights attached so i brought it as a pinkerbell and then i've grafted other varieties on it's quite a uh, smaller apples i find uh, spur bearing variety um so yeah it's a good little tree and uh, i'll i'll put some pictures up um as i go so um pinkerbell's a you know, red apple got these crows going at, at the moment you can probably hear rat 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 but hopefully that's not too annoying for you. All right, Golden Delicious. Golden Delicious is just flowering now. So this whole, just this whole uh, um, branch here is uh, Golden Delicious. I only grafted this last year, so we got a lot of growth on it last year. And uh, it's just flowering now in um, late November, which I think is quite late. I don't know if that's normal for Golden Delicious. Sometimes in Sydney, what we get is some varieties that would normally flower earlier flower a bit later because we don't get the chill hours that um, you know say someone in Melbourne or Tasmania might get that might be the case here with Golden Delicious but anyway beautiful flowers there I'll I suspect I'll be eating some Golden Delicious next year the next one here is Mutsu and Mutsu is a Japanese apple um, um, so I haven't yet tasted Mutsu either. Um, apparently the apples, yeah, the story goes over there that you share one apple amongst a family of four because they're so big. So I'm really keen to get some of this, but 
although we had a lot of growth last year on the first year after grafting we haven't actually got any flowers this year so um, so anyway that might have to wait or we might just work out that you know it's possible mutsu requires a high level of chill in which case if it's no good I'll you know it's quite easy you just chop it back to the where, where I grafted it and then I'll graft something else on um, you know it's you don't have to worry too much about a spalio even if you graft something on that you don't like just graft something else on that you do and um, it will shoot away and it'll be fine um, so that's mutsu now you can see here I've done what I call dog legging I got this from there's a book called a spalier by Ellen Gilbert that's well worth getting if you are into spalier um, what you can do is when you get these long growths, sometimes you get these long water shoots or long growths on an apple tree, you can bend it down while the, uh, while the tree is still flexible or while, while the growth is flexible and uh, even break the bark, bark somewhat. But what you can see here is that when you do that, it actually heals and it forms quite a strong coat hanger or, or dog leg uh, for um, holding on to, to apples later. That's actually a Christmas apple, so again, this is a new graft I did last year, 14th the 8th, 2021. Not much growth yet. Um, again, this will be the first time I've tried this apple. I think this is an American apple, Christmas apple, I think. Um, so I'm keen to um, see what that one is like. In between there I've got some sundowner as an inter I put sundowner on first in uh, 2019 and then I grafted Christmas apple onto that got a few sundowner apples already forming sundowner is an Australian apple um, I think it might be related to pink, uh, Crips pink or pink lady um, I think I'd have to double check that but sundowner is an Australian apple it grows quite well um, good eating apple um, you know, sort of medium sized red apple so all right uh, this one hasn't leafed out yet red Cleopatra it got a bit of um, powdery I think it was powdery mildew or some black sooty mold or something and it, it may be a dud so I don't know if that one's been if that one will come good or not This one is Kelville Blanc de Hiver. Uh, this is a 2021 graft as well. Um, so this is forming this whole U shape up here. It grew quite a bit last year, and you should see there's, there's new growth up there this year. Um, no flowers yet. This is a, I believe it's a French cooking apple. Um, actually, I know it is. It's a French cooking apple. And it's famous um, because it's used in the. Uh, um, there's a, a an apple tart that they do and it's local to the nice uh, area in southern france um, and uh, they use these apples uh, specifically so if i ever get some i will be sure to make a tart and see how they go these are all new graphs so i'm not too too fast there peace good non such is another new one i did last year you can see i'm starting to form a dog leg there with some of the new growth no flowers this year on this one. Um, again, you know, if this one turns out not to be any good for the area, I'll get rid of it if it requires too much chill. It also got affected by some black sort of sooty mold kind of stuff last year. All right, down here we have sundowner again. There's more growing um, there, sundowner. And this is, I've actually grafted on Red Delicious in 2021. So that's starting to grow now i'm not sure if i've got some apples here starting to form or if that's from the pinker bell like it's really hard to see where the graft is now on that one it's already healed so much all right this is one graft that i did this year it's pine golden pippin i think it's an english apple named as such because apparently um, it tastes a bit like pineapple so there are some apples that exhibit flavors or flavor characteristics of other fruit and pine golden pippin is one of those so if you look here you can see where the graft is and then the new new wood going up here 
So it's actually grown quite a bit. I'm really keen to try that one. All right, King David. Grafted 2021. Now, I got um, some fruit off this, and I'll try to find uh, I'll try to find some photos, and if I can, I'll put them up. Now, it's a red apple. Uh, the ones I got were small. I actually let some flowers that grew on the graft in the year I did the graft go to fruit. Um, I'm not sure I'd recommend it because it was it did take quite a toll on um, the tree. Um, it uh, it grew fairly. It didn't grow much at all. Um, so this graft um, um, it focused all its energy on apples, and I didn't get any flowers this year as a result. So I should have perhaps <laughs> not let it um, not let those flowers go to fruit in the first year I did the graft. But that's King David. I believe that's an American apple. Um, it was good eating when I had them. All right, so. Now we'll move over to the Akani tree. Akani is a Japanese apple. Smaller apples, red. Um, I really like them, good eating. Um, I'll put a, a picture up of these so you can have a look. Um, but yeah, that's a Japanese apple, Akani. Pitmaston pineapple. Now this is an interesting one. There's a lot of debate around whether we really have pit mast and pineapple in Australia or whether it's another apple and I'm I'm now believing that we probably what is named as pit mast and pineapple is probably not actually pit mast and pineapple again this is a English apple that's meant to have a flavor characteristic similar to pineapple um, whilst the apple that I did eat and I'll put a picture up now the apple that I did eat did have some flavor characteristics similar to pineapple um, it was also heavily russeted and um, had a uh, sort of a, a different darker red, lighter red, sort of um, or different different shades of red over the skin. So um, yeah, so it was a very different sort of um, apple. Um, what people do think it is though is blue pearmain. And having a look at what a blue pearmain looks like, I'll try and find a photo and can, you can compare it yourself. I think this is probably blue pear mane and a lot of other people who collect apples tend to think the same. All right next this is a new graph for this year this is Braeburn. Uh, Braeburn I think is a New Zealand apple. Um, some of the more modern apples I can't believe I can't remember if it's Jazz or Kanzi or one of those. Um, the the parents of that one of the parents is Braeburn. Braeburn is known for being a very crunchy, crisp apple. Um, I haven't tried it yet. Obviously, I've just grafted it this year, so I'm looking forward to getting some on Braeburns at some point. All right, next we have this is a current year graft. No, the last year's graft. Yes, Devonshire Quarrenden. Yeah, Devonshire Quarrenden is an English apple. It's supposed to have strawberry flavor profile. Um, and it's supposed to be a very early apple. Um, one of the best eating early apples, apparently. Interestingly though, it's only flowering now, uh, which is quite late for an early apple. So I think this might be another one where the chill hours here, uh, are um, obviously very different to England and um, it causes probably later flowering um, to its native sort of country so um, we'll see how this goes um, we may get some fruit this year we've got some flowers so it looks promising um, but I don't think it will be an early apple in Sydney so early should be you know Jan Feb or sometimes even early in December but I reckon it'll probably be a April harvest, but we'll see. Um, going along, we've got a, another one, Kids Orange Red Pippin. I think Kids is one of the uh, parents of Red Delicious, I think. That flower's about to open, probably today or maybe tomorrow. I think it's an American apple, I think. 
Don't take my word for all of this, guys. I'm going off memory. Haven't eaten in one yet, but we might get uh, some flowers there. As I said, just grafted last year. All right, going down off the main trunk of uh, Akani, we have Jonah Gold. I think it's a. I think the name is um, because its parents are Jonathan and perhaps Golden Delicious. I think grafted in 2018. I got a lot of these last year, and I. I found them to be quite delicious. So there's a nice bunch here forming. Um, I probably, I'm probably, I'm experimenting a bit with thinning apples. Um, they do say you should thin your apple crop to get a better crop and that you should have like a hand span apart between fruiting spurs or, or even more. Um, it doesn't always work that way though. Um, so I've got this bunch here, but then I don't have anything as yet along here oh, I've got some over here maybe but yeah there's actually quite a big gap so I'm wondering whether it might be okay to just leave that whole bunch there anyway we'll we'll give it a try you've just got to experiment with things don't you um, but yes no Jonah Gold and I'll put a um, picture up um, red apple I think it's American you know really good eating Again, a, a generally a bit of a smaller apple, and maybe some of the apples here, because the climate's not ideal, maybe some of the apples just form smaller, I'm not sure. Uh, we've got Sundowner here as well, connecting up to that Rayburn. Um, and down the bottom here, we've got Jonah Gold as well, again, connecting up to the Pitmaston Pineapple. All right. Up here, okay, Tropic Beauty. There's a few apples, well, there's two main apples I know called Tropic something. So you've got Tropic Beauty and Tropic Sweet. Tropic Beauty, at least, I think is a South African apple, I think. Um, yeah, it should again do well in lower chill environments, hence the name Tropic. So we'll see how that goes. It's a new graph this year, 2022. Alright, the label's faded on this one, but this is Kirk's Seedling. Now, this is one of the apples that was apparently popular in the markets in the early 1900s in Sydney. Um, grew around this area. Um, I did have some apples last year, and they weren't great. They were a bit, you know, what I'd call a, or my wife would call a potato apple, where it's um, a bit mealy in the texture. Um, but it did have a very nice look to it, a very shiny red you know archetypal ap apple you know perfect example of the apple that eve might pull from the tree so we'll um we'll let a few more go this year sometimes the first fruit's not the best but you let it go and it gets better so we'll um we'll let it go there's a few fruit on this one and we'll see how that goes all right this one down here a bit of a story i've got I've always tried to get the Anna Apple. Anna Apple is um, the pollination partner to Dorset. The big heavy load over there is the Dorset Apple, Dorset Golden. Um, the first time I ordered Anna, I got this apple and I grafted it on and I got some flowers. Uh, flowers were much later. They weren't early. Um, the fruit started developing. It was a green fruit with a heavy russet. I'll put a picture on screen. Um, so green fruit, heavy russeted. The ones I had, some of them got affected by um, um, some kind of fungus thing, bitter rot, I think they call it. Um, but yes, it's a it's a apple where the first year I I got some, um, and uh, the second year I got none. So it might be bian biannual. So I'll put a picture up if you know what it actually is. This one, um, let me know. I think it could be Andre Sauvage or, or a different sort of russet apple, but it was a uh, good eating, a um, bit of a nutty taste as well. So very, um, another interesting apple. Um, all right. I did uh, graft Pinkerbell from my other tree and put it onto here. Pinkerbell, as I said before, one of the things about Pinkerbell is that it's a heavy spur bearer. So it produces a lot of spurs, which I think helps keep it dwarf. There's a few flowers on that one. We should get a few fruit here. But the interesting one here is Carrington. Carrington is another one that was popular 
in the markets and it was actually found I found a newspaper article that um, said the original tree was from a lane behind Dixie um, in Carlingford um, so Carlingford isn't too far from where I live and I thought well why not grow something local the first year it had a lot of fruit um, but they were very about billiard ball size um, and what happened is they went actually super mushy so you could actually push it and it would leave indentations um, almost like a black sapote <laughs> um, so I I don't know it wasn't very good eating but um, reading up on it I think it was a softer apple it's a dessert apple so it is for eating but um, yeah look again we'll give it another try but if it's no good I'll um, I'll get rid of it all right, Lady Williams. I'm a big fan of Lady Williams. This is a, an Australian apple. Um, Rokewood might have been one of the parents. I'm not sure, but the Lady Williams is an Australian apple, and it's famous for being a very late apple. So, this is again how you extend the harvest. Um, there's a few apples forming down here too. You have to net everything up here, guys, with fruit fly, cod ling moth. You know the, the assortment of pests that we get. Rats. Anyway. Lady Williams is uh, again a red apple, dessert apple, really good eating and it's late so after everything else is finished you'll still have Lady Williams hanging on the tree and uh, you'll um, be able to enjoy those July, August, potentially even into September so I'm very happy with Lady Williams and we might get a few more this year. But I do want it to grow a bit higher so we'll, we'll see how that goes. One thing about the espalier is that I probably if I was to do it again, I'd I'd leave more gap. So yeah, it's about that's the gap that we're talking about there. So it's you know 15, 20 centimeters maybe. It probably should have been 30 or 40 centimeters, I think. But never mind, they're doing okay. All right, this is my best performing tree. This is Fuji. I'll put up some pics of the Fujis that I get. They're a um, Japanese apple. Do very well here in Sydney. Uh, prolific you know, prolific bearer. Um, and uh, tasty fruit. Fuji's one of our favourites. Um, so, um, red apple, um, red green anyway. So, well worth trying. Coming off Fuji, I... Um, I've got Freiburg. Can't remember the background of Freiburg. This is a new graft, but um, I tried a Freiburg apple. Um, someone brought back from New Zealand. Very tasty apple. So I thought I'd. So not New Zealand, from Tasmania. I thought I'd try and grow it. Um, uh, and the, the the tag's actually fallen down, but here's the the graft. So that's healed nicely going up and we've got some new growth all right next one here this is again a new graft vista bella vista bella i've found to be a very vigorous growing apple so um, all the grafts i did have taken off crazily which is sort of why i've let a few of these fruit develop i may cut some off but um what I'm noticing is that even though it's growing fruit, it's not stopping the growth like it did on the King David last year. So I may just let those go and I'll, I'll test some out. But yeah, Vista Bella, I think it's an American apple. Um, early to mid maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, Dorset Golden is the tag. Grafted 2019. And it's been doing great things ever since. Love Dorset Golden. It's, um, you know, you have pollination groups in apples. You know, pollination group one, two, three, four, etc. Well, Dorset Golden is pollination group zero. First, one of the first to flower. The only one that flowers before that is a Tropic Sweet. Not the Tropic Beauty, which I showed you before. The Tropic Sweet. I have Tropic Sweet in a pot. Um, and I plan to graft that on next year. But these have all been pollinated by Tropic Sweet. So um, these are developing nicely and they will be ready early December. There's a heap of them on there. So 
double netted for protection. I don't want these to be eaten <laughs> by anyone but me. So, um, all right, what else have I got on here? These are all, this is all Fuji. We love Fuji so much, so we haven't grafted too much more onto this particular tree. This is all Fuji developing. I do have one graft down here. This is interesting, it shows the, the cold tolerance and how it affects things. This is Spartan. Spartan apple is supposed to be, I mean, the pictures on the internet, yeah, they look like a very nice looking red apple. If I have a picture, I'll see, because I did get one apple, and then I don't know what it tastes like because my kids ate it. <laughs> um, but you can see it hasn't even leafed out yet. Oh, but back there it has. Um, yet my brother's one, my brother's is in, um, you know, further out towards Windsor, um, where it gets a bit colder. His one has leafed out, and, um, you know, I think it might have flowered as well, so... Um, yeah, it just shows the difference in um, climates, even microclimates within Sydney and how that affects things. So I think um, Spartan, if it doesn't do well here, I'll remove it. Okay, down here we've got winter banana. Look, I gave winter banana a try. Winter banana is an interesting one because it seems to have some compatibility with pear. So... Um, and I tried this, but I think you have to try certain varieties of pear. I, I got a few grafts to take of pear onto apple, um, but they didn't last that long. They, they leafed out, they just didn't last. They still last six months or so and then, you know, went away. Um, there's some winter banana forming there. The apples themselves are a bit finicky. If you, you kind of have to pick them a little bit early or else they become the you know, they become potato apples, really mealy, not very nice to eat. So um, they say it has a smell or a bit of a taste of banana. I don't think there's a taste. There's a little bit of a smell. I wouldn't write home about it. So, which is why I've grafted on something else that I want to try, which is Cornish Aromatic. This is an English apple from Cornwall. My family name um, traces back to Cornwall. So I thought, um, why not grow something <laughs> from that area? It's already starting to shoot out little spurs. So that's going well. Now you guys might be able to help me with this as well. Have a look at this guy. This is some form of caterpillar or something and it builds its house out of those little leaves. And it slowly consumes the leaf itself. There's another one up here. When I lift them up, I can't actually see a caterpillar, but Definitely something in there. Anyway, that's Cornish Aromatic. Haven't had an apple yet because I just grafted it this year. Um, what else? Oh, so this was Granny Smith down here. One of the things about doing a spalier for apples is that you have to be aware what varieties, what varieties are spur bearing and what varieties are tip bearing. A tip bearing apple will only grow new flowers on the tips. There's not many tip-bearing apples, thankfully. Most apples are spur-bearing, but a tip-bearing apple is not good for a spalier because you you really want to have those limbs coming off that, um, you know, that really are trying to form um, lots of spurs. So they're not the, the best for um, a spalier, um, but look, um, that's why I took Granny Smith off. Uh, I tried to graft something else on there, but it, it failed. So I'll um, I'll do something else next year. All right. So they're my espalier apples. Um, I do encourage you to have a go. Um, we got our first real good crop last year. It takes a few you know, few years. Planted most of them in 2017, but we got our first real good crop last year. And this year, I think we'll be on track for another pretty good crop. Um, so um, alright well that's it everybody thanks for watching bye